Hey guys, Brendan New Productions here. <coughs> Whoa. <laughs> and welcome to my 24th or 25th Java tutorial. I believe this is actually the 25th. Um, in this tutorial, I will be covering how to load images into a Java applet and display them. Um, this actually doesn't only work for applets, though. Um, it will also work for canvases and um, JPanel or JFrame applications. So any sort of application where you would need to display images within Java, this method will work. Um, this also works for applets that will be placed on the web. So if you're planning on making any little Java games uh, that people can access from their web browsers, this tutorial is for you. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of this in one class. So I'm just going to right click on my project here and create a new class and call it Image Loading Tutorial. Now the first thing we need to do to this class is actually make it so it can display images. So we need to make it so it's actually an applet. So in order to do that, we're first going to have to import the applet class. So we're going to import java.applet.applet. Now if you've watched my applet tutorial, you'll also know that in order to paint things into an applet, you need to use a graphics object. Now just to make things a little less complicated, we're also going to use a graphics 2D object uh, because they have a lot more functionality than the regular standard graphics object. So I'm just going to also import java.ot dot graphics and imports java dot ot dot graphics 2d so we get the importing done right away so now the first thing we're actually going to do is make this class a subclass of an applet so we're going to say extends applet and now that we're done with that we can actually get our applet set up so if you've watched my applet tutorial you know that applets are drawn to the screen using a paint method now the paint method actually contains all of the information about what is to be drawn on the screen. So in order to actually draw this applet on the screen, we need to create the paint method. So this can be done in two ways. Um, we can either type public void paint and then insert the parameter of graphics G and open up the method. Or we can also click source and then override slash implement methods. Now this will actually give us all of the uh, uh, the methods that the applet class contains that we can actually um, overwrite. Now of course uh, the paint method is not listed in here because um, I'm trying to show you and that's just how it happens. Um, ah, here it is. It's actually an applet is actually a subclass of container so the paint method is actually in the container class. So what we can do is we can actually just check this method here and then press OK. And then as you can see, the paint method is automatically generated. However, um, we are just going to use the method of creating our own custom paint method, so we're going to delete all of the stuff that Eclipse already inserted into us. Now keep in mind that this is only some functionality that is specific to Eclipse, so if you are using any other IDE, you won't be able to click on source and override slash implement methods. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do in our paint method is we're actually going to create a graphics 2D object. This will allow us to do more intricate things than the standard graphics object allows. So let's go ahead and create a graphics 2D object called the graphics or G2. So graphics 2D G2 and then all we need to do is cast our G graphics to graphics 2D. So to cast we put things in parentheses and then we throw uh, Java the variable that we would like to cast. So we're casting G to Graphics 2D. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to actually draw the image on the screen. So we're going to have to say g2.drawImage. Now as you can see there are several um, different parameter sets that can happen with the drawImage command. So let's go ahead and just look at um, the easiest one here which would probably be this one. So what we're going to need is we're going to need an image, an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, a width, a height, and an image observer. So let's go ahead and get started right away with the image. So I'm just going to create a global variable here, and this is going to be the image object that we are working with. So let's just call this image, um, well, we're going to be loading a, um, what will we be loading? Well, um, we could just create something in paint really fast. So I'm going to load uh, or draw the image of a spiral. That's it. Um, so we are creating a new object of the type image and the variable name is spiral. Now to start off we're just going to set this equal to null. And we're also going to change this to private because no other classes need to access uh, this image. 
Now it's going to tell us that we need to actually import the image class, so we can go ahead and do that. Well, Eclipse will automatically do it for us. And now we have this uh, spiral image object. The only problem is it's set to null. So if we actually try to draw this to the screen, uh, Eclipse is going to throw us an error saying it can't draw a null object to the screen, which is, of course, understandable. So what we need to do is we need to actually make a method that um, loads the image from the file system. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new method called public, and this method is actually going to return the image that it loads. So image, and then I'm just going to call it get image. And um, we are uh, going to have to insert a path, of course. And then, so this method is actually going to get the image from the file system and return the image object. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to give this method its own image object that it will keep track of. So we're going to create a new image object called temp image and set that equal to null. Now the reason we're setting all of our variables equal to null is because sometimes um, programming language has have a problem where if the um, item is first not defined as null before you set it, then it can't set the object since it's not inst inst instantialized, instantialized or instantiated. Um, so we're setting it to null so the item actually has a value. So the next thing we need to do is we need to actually load the image from the file system. However, there, could, there is a possibility that the image will not exist. So we actually need to check for this. So in order to do that, we are going to put this whole segment into a try block. Now a try block basically catches for errors, and if any error occurs, um, you can jump down to a specific part of code. But right now we're just going to use the uh, insert into the try block the code to load the image. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to get the URL of where the image is stored. So we're going to create a new URL object, and I'm just going to call it image URL. Now, th to actually get this URL, you need to access the applet. The applet contains the uh, methods that will actually um, return the URL. So we just need to access this applet, which is image loading tutorial dot, and then we need to access its specific class. And then we are just going to tell its class to get the resource. Um, and then we're going to send it a path. So we already have the temporary variable path as a parameter, so we're just going to send that in. So that little piece of code will return the URL object of where the image is located. Now from that URL, we'll actually be able to load the image. But first, we need to actually import the URL object. So um, there are two URL objects within Java, javax.print.docflavor and java.net we are actually going to be using java.net for this specific task. So what's next? Well, the next thing is to turn this URL into the image itself. So we've already got an image object called temp image, and all we're going to do is set that equal to the image that the URL corresponds to. So we're going to say temp image equals, um, and now we just need to tell Java to load it from the file system. So this can be done with the default toolkit, which contains a lot of useful tools and methods to uh, access different things within the uh, within the computer or Java itself. So we're going to say toolkit dot get default toolkit. So this is the toolkit that we're going to be using, the default one. And then um, as you can see, it has a bunch of different methods that are um, very useful. For example, we can beep, uh, we can notify, uh, we can get an image, we can add an extra mouse button, we can create an image, uh, we can wait, stuff like that. Uh, but for now, what we want to do is we want to get an image. And now it wants us to send in a string file name. However, instead of actually sending in the string, we are going to send in the URL that we just created. So we're just going to send in image URL. And then, of course, we insert our semicolon because that is a command. And now we just have to deal with what happens if the image does not exist. So to um, catch errors that a try block may throw, we need to actually say catch and then name the specific exception. Well, we want to catch any error that may exist, so we're going to just call this a general exception E. And then if an error occurs, we are just going to system.out.println, and then we're going to say an error occurred, and then we are going to tack on the error message. So this can be done plus e.getMessage. So now we're actually loading the image and returning an error if the image does not exist. However, the final thing we need to do is we actually need to return this image back from the method. So now we're just going to say return temp image. 
Now we're all set. We have a perfectly working get image method, and we can go ahead and use this to actually create our spiral image. So in the paint method, the first thing we're going to do is check to see if spiral is null. So if spiral equals equals null, so this means that spiral has not yet been assigned an image. The image spiral is not yet loaded from the file system. So if it is null and not let yet loaded from the f file system, we're going to say spiral equals get image and then send the path. Well, our path is just going to be this sp wherever this um, actual applet is located, and we're just going to call this spiral.png. And we're just going to press enter to leave a space there. And um, now all we need to do is deal with our drawing the image. So we're going to go ahead and open this up, press control space to get a list of parameters, and then um, double click on our wanted parameters so it gives us these little uh, tooltip indicators. So the image that we want to draw is actually spiral. Now we are going to place it um, at 25x pixels uh, to the right and 50x y pixels down. Um, the width of this image, let's just make it 25 by 25. And the image observer, now this is actually the object that is going to be notified once the image is placed. However, right now we're not dealing with image notifications or any sort of image observer interactions whatsoever. So we can actually just send this as null to conserve memory space. So now we have a perfectly working applet um, that will actually display an image. Now the only problem with this applet is if we actually run it, um, you can see that the applet is small. Um, you can also see that it says an error occurred null. Well this is because we haven't created the image yet. But the applet is small, so we actually want to make it a little bigger. So in the paint method, before we actually load the image, we're just going to say this dot set size and send in a width and a height. So I'm just going to make this 680 or 640 by 480, uh, the classic 1990 resolution. So let's go ahead and save this project one more time and then create the image. So I'm just going to open up Microsoft Paint here and get started on our image. Now the first thing we need to keep in mind is that our image was supposed to be 25 by 25. So I'm going to open up the properties and set this canvas to 25 by 25. Now I'm going to zoom in because this is a relatively small image and um, we're actually just going to make a quick spiral. So I'm just going to use the paintbrush and go now that is a very tiny spiral, but that's okay. So now I'm going to click Save As, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to pop this image right into where it belongs. So right where your class is located. So I'm going to go to where my class is. Now this is in Tutorial uh, Project. And then I've got um, all of this uh, these folders. We've got bin and source. Now source is where the source code is actually located. Um, Oh wait, I believe I pressed open instead of save. Oh no, I didn't. We're good, we're good. Um, so source is where the source code is actually located. Now bin is where all the binaries are stored. So that's where all the executables are. So what we're actually going to want to do is we're going to save this image in the bin folder so the executable classes know how to load this. So it was, we called it spiral.png and then we're just going to save it right where it belongs. Now you can actually confirm that this is in the right location by right clicking on your project, pressing import, and then um, double clicking on file system. And then you can actually import files from a specific directory. So we're going to go ahead and find um, right where our project was located. So I have mine in my Dropbox, Java, Workspace 2, uh, Tutorial Project, and Bin. And then you can actually find all of these uh, classes that I've used before. But there's our image that we want. So we're just going to import that. Source is in the hierarchy of the destination. Well, um, it's going to give us a little error because we're actually um, already located where we need to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into the actual file system itself and move this image here to the desktop so we can properly uh, move it. So I'm just going to do that and go to my desktop, paste it in there. And so now all we need to do is jump down to my desktop, find the image itself, and we're all set. Now we just press finish. And as you'll notice in this little um, package explorer here, our spiral image is actually there. So now if we run our applet, you'll notice that not only is it big, but we also get the error and error occurred null. Well, that's definitely a problem. Now, I believe this problem is because we didn't put a slash here, but I'm not absolutely sure.
So let's go ahead and test that out. Nope. Well, that's definitely not good. Uh, um, um, all right, we can do this, guys. We can do it. So let's go ahead and try to figure out where our project or our image is. And as you can see, if we actually refresh this, it's not actually where it needs to be. It's actually within, um, just within the parent directory. So if we actually move the spiral image um, into the uh, default package and run the application, we don't get an error, which means the image was loaded properly. Um, and if we check, the image is actually in our bin folder. However, it is still not properly displaying on the screen. So let's go ahead and investigate this problem. Um, let's see here. Um, maybe... Okay, so the problem was actually the image observer. So instead of actually saying that the image observer is null, we actually need to say that the image observer is the applet in which the image will be placed in. So once we changed um, null to this to keep track of the actual applet, um, our spiral is drawn onto the screen. So keep in mind that this is a 25 by 25 object loaded directly from the file system. And now whenever we build our project, this picture will be included since we imported it into Eclipse. So thanks for watching this tutorial on how to actually get an image. Um, I'm, I may put the code in the description, uh, so keep an eye out for that. In future tutorials about Java images, we will learn how to move an image, rotate an image, change the size of an image, um, coordinate image movements with keys, and on top of that, we'll learn how to package your images into a jar file so they can be used for web applets. You know, I need to make actually a whole tutorial about that, creating um, a web page where your applets will actually be visible. Or maybe I have. I'm really not sure. It's been quite some time. But anyway, thank you a lot for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot, and I hope you have a great day. Peace.